So, hello again everyone and welcome to part 3, well, the third episode of this 3D printable uh, glove, keyboard glove modeling session with OpenJSCAD. So, for today we're gonna do a bit more roughing out and establishing the main shapes as we did a bit in the previous episode. So I took a bit of time looking more precisely at the various shapes and how the design flows and things like that. So let's get cracking. So we're gonna modify the shape of the palm rest to sort of encompass most of the keyboard parts. And in order to do that, we're gonna import some new functions, namely hole and chain hole, which allow you to create sort of a bubble wrap around parts, but you'll see how that works in a second. So let's just comment out we don't care about right now and just keep the palm rest and so we're gonna modify the 2d base shape here so what I tend to do so I'm gonna show you here we are doing a linear extrusion and we're gonna hide that and we're just gonna actually not even need to come that out we're gonna return just the base shape so we're gonna debug the 2d shape and first I'm gonna show you what a hole between two shapes is so for this it's not going to change anything but imagine that I would move the the cube here the sort of square sorry a bit further away and you're gonna see that it's gonna wrap basically around that shape wherever the different shapes may be so you can actually do a whole of multiple parts and I'm gonna also show you right away what a uh, quick hole, sorry, not a quick hole, um, chain hole means. So we're gonna move this, let's say, on the other side. So just a hole, you can see it wraps, in this case, the circle here and the two squares that you would have here, two rectangles. And uh, chain hole is a bit different because it does hold one by one so basically it does a hole between the circle and the square and between that and the next square so that it doesn't just wrap all the things but yeah linearly wraps one by one well two by two actually the different shapes to create some interesting variations so what this looks like in 3D would be something like this. It's always good to get a better feel for that. So how can we do this? Um, I need to think a bit and get back always to the reference. So I think what we could go for is so we have that initial circle. We could have a small circle here and then a small circle at the end and we can then join them nicely and smoothly i think so let's just do that and we're gonna use circle instead a translated circle so it's good to always set that up regardless of what we're gonna use transformation wise and we're gonna have a circle of course it doesn't like it if you're missing something and let's remove for now the other cube which was offset by that much yes of course it's now zero so let's move it by 25 as we had with the square so this is literally a circle of radius one here and we can keep that there and we're going to add another one that's going to be quite further on the x-axis. As you can see here, it does sort of the overall shape there. Let's move this, I think, further away to account for the 50 size square that we had. There we're going to enlarge the radius perhaps by 20 sometimes the camera reset is kind of annoying so I really need to change that behavior 
Again, very simply switch between 2D and 3D, just like this. Mm, and yes, sometimes it's actually not that bad to keep the rest around to get a better feel. So, let's check that out. Okay, so I think we need to move this a bit further up and move the second circle somewhat forward. So let's go with a radius of 10 first and we can move it around 150. And just like last time, we are keeping things as they are in hard-coded fashion and not doing any fancy parametric stuff for now. Let's lower that a bit, perhaps. Oh, sorry, my bad, because we need to actually make it go further away. Mm, close, but still no dice. Yeah, you iterate, iterate, or iterate as always. So there we should have that, which is not bad at all. Perhaps this is a bit of an extreme angle here, so I think we could just raise it a tad and move it back. This is of course going to move it forward, so not quite what we want, although that can be a nice slope as well. But yeah, let's move it back for now, we can always change it later. There, and that's actually giving us perhaps a better approximation of this shape than what we had in the previous video. Also, some small thing to note here is that we actually want the radius of the palm hole, palm rest, sorry, to be a bit bigger than the actual trackball. So let's make that somewhat larger. We can go with 30 in there so that can be encompassed in the end we're going to do some cuts by way to expose more of a trackball because you want that to be resting on your thumb so let's go with 28 because this seems excessive of course uh, in the end you'll also want to accommodate or take into account the limitations of the 3d printed technology you're going to use and this is going to be targeted at uh, FDM, so Fused Deposition Modeling, so think standard RepRap, Prusa, uh, such 3D printers or Ultimakers, so Fused Deposition Modeling. And those are quite sturdy parts usually, but you can't get the uh, highest level of precision, but we're not shooting for that and I don't think that's going to be needed. So I think what we also can add here is another shape in the corner so that the transition back to the original circle is perhaps a bit smoother. So let's add that, another circle, and this is going to be all the way back to the original point, almost. So let's see how this would look. Uh, this is going to be, I guess, swallowed in it, so perhaps 20... 20. There, that goes a bit too high, so let's go a bit deeper, perhaps 30. And yes, I will repeat that quite often, but iteration in this case helps solve a lot of issues and also. Well, this is the way you would progress typically until you get what you want. And you'll see how we end up with something closer to the approximation. Like, ah, yes, of course. So this is my bad. What it's doing actually is doing something that flows back here. And that's perhaps not ideal. So what we can actually do is just take this intermediary circle and move it actually to one of the previous steps. So there's going to be this thing here that you can, can have a better control over. So let's move it a bit back. 
there we can increase the radius to have a less sharp transition between this circle and that one so let's go with 20 here as well and we're going to move it back to zero on the x-axis perhaps even further back sorry there perhaps even more there this might be a bit still too sharp there but the overall shape is not bad at all so uh, let's move on i think we can now get rid of what we had in the keyboard part so basically this cube i think is not needed anymore so we can just return the keys there because that's all we need and we don't need the blocks so there you go and uh, what we could do for now i'm gonna disable the sphere the cutout for now because that's not essential for the keyboards parts and i'm gonna show you a little bit of a trick so Imagine you want to have cutouts for the keys, like sort of these hollowed positions. So what you could do is basically reuse your keyboard component twice. So we called it here. What we could also do, so we're going to have something intermediary in the palm rest called... Um, um, so open body shape for example and that's gonna be the 3d counterpart to the base shape that we have so we're gonna return that for now and what we're actually gonna do is return the difference between body shape and keyboards and normally if I haven't messed up you should end up with a cutout which is not gonna be visible because you're both doing a cutout and putting the buttons there. So the other ones seem to be a bit too high up, but as you can see, these were cut off nicely. So if I move this, I think a bit further up, you should see, and that was further down, you should see all the points. And uh, never mind, 50 was the standard. So let's increment by small amounts. So now that goes lower, so let's put it a bit higher. 48. There you go. So now you can see all the, well, most of the keys. Let's go even a bit further. And there, now you have all the keyboard cutouts. Uh, what we can also do is a nice little trick. Once you have base shape defined, you could also do basically a hollowed out version of this. For example, if you want to have a space for electronics. So what we're going to do here is reuse this time the base shape. So imagine that we want, sorry, we're going to return the base shape again and we are going to create another shape so that means inner shape which is just the base shape but scaled down a bit uh, we might also try other operations such as contract or expand which might also have a better result for this but let's just check this out so let's scale across two dimensions this one and instead of returning base shape let's turn inner shape yeah this is somewhat smaller and we can also just return inner shape and base shape in an array like this if we want to see both so you can see they're not centered on the same thing so we're gonna need um, to use contracts and we're going to use contract here. So yes, we're going to use contract. So we're at this 2.51, if I remember that right. 
so there you go so this has been contracted so it's still at the same position uh, by the way this reminds me I think we could actually rename this to base outline because that's literally all it is it's not even a shape but an outline so this is gonna be the inner outline and there and so we can change the values of contract to make a more or less thick um, well shape that's going to be hollowed out as you can see so what we actually want is our we're going to reuse this time the inner shape sorry the base shape variable name and we're going to call that we're well, going to define that as being a difference between the base outline and the inner outline and let's return that and we should have visually a similar result because we're just cutting it out this time and not just returning an array of it and so if we remove this and return the 3d version you're not going to see it except from the side there it's a hollowed out piece and it's still 3d printable obviously you would put it like this most likely on your 3d printed bed and you can reuse the outline to do the caps on the side so to be able to close that box off in a way so yeah to do those caps um, we're gonna reuse the base shape or rather sorry the base outline and that's gonna just be the linear extrusion of that thing so we can actually reuse almost all of it we're just gonna have uh, let's call it left cap and we can do this uh, except for the base shape we're not going to use that we're going to use the base outline and we're going to return so we have the difference here of keyboard to the keys and the body shape we're actually going to return both this so just an array again as usual keep it simple and we're going to return left cap because we also want that and as you can see now it's closed off because I actually did sorry a bit more I did the issue that it's actually extruding all the way we of course don't want a cap that fills everything so we're just going to set the height to for example I tend to choose three or four millimeter thick parts to make them 3D printable because those are usually really nice. So there, as you can see, the other end is closed off. We could also color this differently to make it obvious that that's actually a different part. So why not do that simply here? So color, uh, let's go with red and green like this and of course one for alpha we want that visible and fully so and let's close the array off correctly and you're going to be able to see that that thing is actually cap so of course it's overlapping because we are not offsetting the cap there so there's two ways we can do this uh, we won't get into details for now we could either have only the inner part so we would be using inner outline instead of base outline so that would only fill the inside but if you want an actual cap you would of course reduce the extrusion size here so hey why not turn at least this little part parametric so we're gonna do cap thickness that's gonna be our first parameter uh, for simple parameters we just keep it like this later on we'll just be using simple JavaScript object so this is gonna be the extrusion let's keep it at 4 to make it somewhat sturdier and this is gonna be extruded by that value and here we will just extrude by the height so the total 100 minus that but that was offset in the other direction so we need to offset it a bit here uh, sorry the other way around always always the mistakes with the directions 
there you go so now you have nicely capped in yellow side there and we could do the same thing on the other side so we have two caps so to close it off again this is one possible way of modeling this not sure this is the best but this is one solution and it gets us to a workable prototype because that's what you want get as fast as you can to a 3d model prototype that you can print and you can hold in your hand see what works what doesn't and then you go back to your design and improve it so let's do simply right cap that's gonna be pretty much very similar so let's keep it that way it's almost everything's the same we're just gonna translate it of course to a different position and we will add it here let's just reuse that again not trying to optimize here or anything so of course it's the same position so let's put it so this is as you can see so red is the first value in a array of colors so that's why it's well red green is the second so that's y and z is the third so that's why it's blue and we're gonna i think move it the other way around like this there you go so this is now capped off at both ends with separate pieces in this case by the way it can be useful to have a bit of transparency sort of that, to actually show off some of your inlets so you can see inside now halfway uh, not always very practical it gets really confusing with lots of transparent pieces but at least well it's very trivial to be able to see inside and this is not exactly correct because uh, we actually want to reduce the body so the basically the blue part by twice the cap thickness and not just once so let's do that and this is going to be needed to well we're going to need to recenter the piece obviously so move it a bit further along and sorry never mind we actually need to so depending on what your starting point is so it actually is starting from here so this is offset there we just offset that one so the height is really correct so that's your total minus your two caps one on each side and here we moved it in the minus direction so that way by that much and we also need to just a sec minus cap thickness that's what you get for doing your videos too late mine's mushy and you need to think twice for simple things and so it should be offset by that so we can also use this because the sorry we need to offset it by cap thickness so why are we doing this because again the starting point from extrusion was from here so this minus 50 is actually minus 50 in that direction and that includes the thickness so if you want to go back from your thickness then of course you need to remove that a bit so uh, i think we have some really nice caps going on so let's get back to the design a bit so what we could do and uh, this is not quite doing the curvature justice so we need to bend it a bit upwards so we can go back very simply and only change the position of our circles that make up this uh, shape so we just need to lift this up by a bit so i think well that's not very obvious oh yes of course we are actually doing what we expect as you can see the keyboard holes are not visible because we lifted that up so what we're gonna do is create intermediate points so always think that you can add comments so you can call this last point 
and we could also extract this and call uh, create a variable like this i'm going to show you very simply last point would be this quite simply and you can reuse that and it works the same way this is the great part about having them just simple variables nothing fancy but for now i don't think this is in this specific case particularly needed so let's just go back so we have this final point last point and we want one before that which would be approximately i guess at uh, let's make it 130 let's this one needs to go obviously lower so there as you can see we're getting some part of that curvature in there you could also obviously have this defined by mathematical, mathematical formulas uh, honestly on off the top of my head i don't have any specifically to define correctly a shape of a hand um, i did not do research so that's the blame is really solely on me usually you would go looking way deeper into this and do adapted research so this is still the last point perhaps we can even raise it a bit further i'm trying to mimic the positions of my of the object with my hands here in front of the screen again yet obviously without a webcam that's not very clear so perhaps like this uh, not quite Perhaps this should move down a bit more. No, that's actually not bad at all. Perhaps not quite as extreme, but I think this could work quite well. So again, you can always mix and match what is defining what. So in this case, originally, I think uh, I was thinking that the best place to drive the design was the key placements. Uh, I still think that, but perhaps it can be based on your finger placement. So basically on the curvature here. And so you can very easily have the angle between each different segment, so to speak, between each of the circles and use that to define where you want your keys to lie. Uh, speaking of which, I think we could have some more rounded effect by increasing that. Whoops, that's a bit excessive, perhaps. Mm, still too excessive. But at least you can visualize quite easily where that is. So. And what if I really increase it? As always, some exaggeration allows you to visualize it. That's still way too close. So let's move that way back because that's not quite what I had in mind. Hmm. Not bad, but the inner part is being lifted a bit too much. So let's go smaller. There, not bad at all, not bad at all even though we don't quite see the keys. <coughs> but yeah, this could actually be a very rough but workable prototype. Uh, like, I mean, really extremely rough. So um, I think what we need to concentrate a bit more in the next few episodes is, so let me take a look at the main design again. So having the correct placement for the keys, uh, we're also going to discuss a bit more about, well, the actual mechanics. So what kind of button you want there, because this still is meant to be an actual printable object. So what kind of physical push buttons are you going to use? Because you need to account for that in the design. And we're going to make some things progressively more parametric. Also, actually account for the different keys and perhaps add some curvature on the along on the other axis as well. And that last but not least, there's also the 
track ball which needs to be done a bit differently and the strap which shouldn't be not that complicated but you still need to account for it so wait a sec yes yes i think those will be the main points so also how do you want the box this box to be able to open and close and does it make sense to actually have the things the sort of side panels for that or is perhaps a bottom panel more practical than that but again the aim is not to have a perfect design from scratch but to have something that works and halfway resembles your intents and you can always improve again and again but sometimes simple is best so thank you for watching again and see you next time bye